All right, and welcome back. We are still thrilling. We are still exciting. We are still blowing your minds. We are Saturday Night Gaming, and we present Heavenscape, the installment called Valos Through the Neva. We have uh, entered this realm yet again, this time in the Seabound Era, and we are currently on a ship known as the Storm Rider, captained by Jack Kerrick, and uh, a lot of our young heroes and aspiring uh, warriors, some with dreams of being gods, uh, are currently trapped in a situation where their ship was being attacked by a group of sea ferals, which are uh, much like aquatic wolves. And as they let their blood flow into the ocean water, uh, they noticed that uh, a few hundred yards away, something much larger, something with a much more imminent bloodthirst is making its way towards them. Uh, we'll see how they do, but until we do, we will introduce everyone again, round table, starting with my man Ron. Go ahead and give a short introduction for your character and uh, what he's thinking right now. Hi, I'm Ronnie. Uh, I will be voicing Thulgrim Bloodwind. And right now, he's thinking, Von Blood Warriors! And whatever random word might else pop up in his head. Um, but right now, he's having a lot of fun. He's getting the fight, and he sees new challenges. And he's just like, oh man, he's excited. He got to give his main man a hug. Uh, old Uthor, Old Thor, Uthor. He can't remember his name either. He just uh, loves him. He just loves him. He even showed him his real face, and he was just like, "You should get that looked at." But I still love you. Next time, it's going to be a hug fight. Um, but yeah, he's just—he's there for the glory, and he is there to fight. He is excited. Nice. A challenge has come. Challenge accepted. Good. All right. Uh, my name is. John, and uh, my character is John Red, and uh, he has just realized that he has thrown his axe into the sea, and he has never actually tried to call it back before, even though that's, that was an advertised feature. When he picked this up in the, the seafaring catalog, uh, yeah, yeah. it it's said it was a returnable, the yeah. seamall. <laughs> So we'll see if that happens for him. That, so that's he's, a, he's, an, he's anticipating trying this because it'd be really cool if it would. You know, he's heard the stories of Thor. That's pretty antsy. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see what happens. My name is uh, Caleb, and I will be returning as the uh, lovely voice of Soul. Still very uh, socially awkward, uh, cooking food, wondering why Thorgrim eats so much. He eats more than half the people on this ship. Uh, half the potatoes go to him. Um, recently figured out the uh, things that are wet can burn as long as you incinerate them from the inside. Uh, also remember that Big Man's axe does not want to uh, sing for me right now, but maybe later. Maybe later. Yes, and maybe that beer will come in too. Yes, it's coming in very nice. All right, Digital Dan. I am Einar Ragnos, and. I'm rather happy right now that my hunting skills are transferring so well, but I am rather not looking forward to meeting whatever that is. And I point at the ripples in the water. All right. And Cyber Chuck? Um, my name's Chuck. I'm playing Ulthar, an ancient um, cultist who's been cursed by his god and can it would be very hard to die. And does not like hugs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great job, guys. Uh, thanks for introducing yourselves again. I am Tony Stevens. I am your GM. I am your deity in this world. Uh, so getting started right back where we were, uh, one of the sea ferals dead and broiling on the ship's deck. One of them, its skull cracked open in the ocean water. Two of them with axes sticking out of their back and one 
sneakily getting around, maybe maybe underwater, maybe somewhere else, who knows where he is, and something quite large, a few hundred yards away, making its way at a high pace towards the blood that's been let into the water. Um, so let's go ahead and start off there. So what, uh, what plans do you have there, Fulgrim? I want to retrieve my axe with the beast still on it. Okay. And then hit its, its launch in the back. How close is it to its head? I mean, think about this thing like a wolf. It's the size of a wolf. So if, if this oh, is large and okay. is in its back, it's pretty close to its head. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to smash its head with a flail. All right. Well, let's see if that happens for you, okay? So go okay. ahead and roll. All right. And, and that return ability, what do you have uh, set for... It's just can call back, um, only he can weld them the godly weapons. So would it be constitution that he's using? Um, Dexterity? Axe robotics? Is it running off of his own strength? It'd be a strength, more than likely, because it's just like, a inf just like a reflex. Okay. Uh, so let's Because it's it bound to him. Strength. It's bound to him. It is bound to him specifically, that's true. Okay. And the plus two is still there. Thank God. Scene has not changed. Alrighty, so... Five... Three. Sea ferals are very stupid and very weak, apparently. Uh, you do succeed at retrieving the axe as you see its uh, handle start to vibrate. Um, through the sheer connection with you, it lifts out of the water and you can hear the gurgled yelp of the sea feral as it flies through the air to the deck of the ship to you. All right, as I grab it and I'm like, that's what you look like? Smash! It's kind of like a dolphin mixed with a yelping dog. And it's what it sounds like when doves cry. So, uh, excellent job. Um, <laughs> so that's uh, that successful uh, John the Red, the possibly named Axrobatic. Okay, so let me see what we got here. Let me get my magic dice out. The Quadaxic. Aquatic. Aquadaxic. Aquatics. Is his name? Aquatics. Quadax X. Aquatics. It is Aquatics. Yeah, I've just been typing X into my phone that place. So, <laughs> uh, I found it. <clears throat> Alright, uh, what did you say this was on? Like, the callback? Your callback is based on your intelligence. Alright. Let's do it. Press the button. Roll. Not a bad roll, and I'm gonna need it because my intelligence is only one. That was one. Plus two. Plus two for what? Vision. Oh, vision. You can see clearly okay. through the world because of Saul's benefit to you. All right, so uh, my die roll would be two. So then plus the two, so that's a plus four. two. Yeah. And this sea feral has done poorly oh. again. So the aquatax returns to you. Ah, it Not clearly stated to have the dog still attached to it. It just rips free from the dog's spine, also adding its blood to the water, mm. pooling further and further out around the I'm, ship. I fight the urge to jump into the pool of blood. Should I roll for that? I would like to compel you. <laughs> Where are my fake crystals? Dang, now that I forgot them all right there. Uh, if you accept this, you'll write it down. That's how we'll work this for now. I would like to compel you with your sense of blood longing to jump into the water and bathe in the sea feral blood. So I get a fate? For you that? would get a fake point for that. And if I choose not to, I'll also get to be John the Blue. Yes. Oh, I can't take it. I jump into the blood. Then go ahead and write down your fate point. You jump into the blood. I now have three fate points. I will need them to get out of the situation. <laughs> that might possibly be very true. Uh, 
So, Saul, as you're standing there, you see this madman of the pocket cape uh, jump into the water and start splashing it on himself, thriving in the I'm water. having a great time. He is enjoying himself like a monkey in a kiddie pool. I pick up the, uh, the sea dog. The blood isn't red, right? Do what? You can tell the blood is... A, it's it's bluish in tinge. Yeah. John, I thought you were John the Red, not John the uh, Smurf. What's going on here? That's just a coincidence. Like, uh, You're looking uh, blue. I'm going to do you have a dad. I've been down recently. So I need this. <laughs> so, so listen up here. I need this for me. If he was green, he would die. I look at... I no, actually, I'm John the purple now. I'm mixing the blue and the red. You're, you're, well, I've you know, blood is blue before it leaves the body and oxidizes. That is not true. <gasps> Oh. Lies my whole life are built upon them. Yes, they are. Great. Wow. Here comes John you come to this show for stands. entertainment and you get knowledge. That's yeah. what we're all about here at Blood Saturday Night Gaming. Uh, that's how you know if like, say some cat's bleeding out. If it's really bright red, they probably punctured the lung or something. Wow. Yeah. Organ blood is So really, if it's more of a purplish blood, I'm good? I don't know about <laughs> that. If it's more like blood that you're accustomed to, it's probably... Just a Let, nick. Right. Okay. Yeah, cool. not, not an organ. So yeah. I'm not going to lose this finger. Have That's I good. also noticed the uh, ripples in the water? Uh, I don't know. I'm Let's roll a perception check to see if you've noticed this. Einar didn't exactly call it out to everybody. I, I did yell it out. I told everybody at the end of the last session that we were going to need to get their axes wisdom, back if right? they wanted them. He did say get your axes back. That's true. It's said wisdom, right? Mm. For what? For perception? Yeah. For his? Yes. And it's yours too. one time. More distracted, I guess. It's, it's a, a one. one. It's a one. It's, I got my um, you seem to be gazing at the fireballs that you have created, it's and so you're trying to keep the them ball. from Those hitting the sails. Balls. Oh, thank great you. balls of fire balls that you have. Uh, goodness gracious, but you do not want them to hit the sails, so you are concentrating heavily on maintaining Don't their Don't worry, course. Captain. I won't burn down your ship. Oh, uh, well, we shall see about that. Okay. I'm just enjoying the show. Okay. As the captain okay. continues to sit back, relax, and watch how y'all carry on in this adventure. I'm like a bunch of crazy people. All right, so, Einar, where are we at? Oh, did you, you, you didn't perceive it. Did you want to do anything? Does that can I make out the other... Sea Feral that is, has already been identified with the lights. There. You would have a bonus with that. Okay. So, can I try to attack it then? The one that's still in the water? You can try to attack it. I'm going to like, see if I spot movement and then go pew pew. Pew pew? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is. Uh, we said constitu constitution. Correct. Right? Seven. Seven? Yeah, uh, two from here, and then my plus two from my fireballs. So what y'all see is him hold out his finger like a finger gun and let out a highly intensified blast of fire that hits the water, boiling it, and then you see the sea dog thrashing about in the boiled water as it cooks alive. You've made more food for Thulgrim. Throw my hands up. That's how we do it from the mountain. <laughs> You're from the mountain too. He's oh, <laughs> going to hug me just like other scarfy men. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Is the we have a bunch of dead yeah. sea ferals. We have a man swimming in the sea feral blood bathing himself in it, and we have the large ripples that you can see in the distance. All right, is the giant ripples close enough that I can see what's causing them? They're not quite close enough to the fireballs yet to be illuminated by the scene bonus. Okay. But you can the tell that they are heading towards the man bathing in the water. <laughs> As if blood has right. triggered a greater beast's senses. Um, 
how close is John to John the Blue? How close is he to the ship? He's, yeah, I mean, he's within like 10 feet of the ship. Okay. Oh, wait. <sighs> Wanting to try something that I can't quite do just yet. So I'm, instead I'm going to tell John to get out of the water or ready his axe. Okay, so he's calling out to you, John. He's telling you to get out of the water or ready your axe. What? What? Why? What's happening? Death comes for you. Death comes for us all. Death <laughs> comes I get, for I get really us all. I really stoic and I say that. <laughs> he gives you his crazy eyes as the bottom eyelids start to curl up and his eyes ping around crazily. His red eyebrows raise high and he says, Death comes for us all. <laughs> John, what are you talking about? What's your point? <laughs> and then I'm going to try and run across the water bouncing off of the pieces of the sea wolves or sea ferals. I remember something similar happening once. Uh, that will be an extreme action of dexterity. Fun. Should be interesting. It should. It always has been in my recollection. As long as there and, are no flaming uh, tornadoes we might be okay. We'll see if I Managed to stay out of the water with a zero. A zero, say you. Oh, yeah, I managed to roll away the plus one bo bonus that my dex has. Okay, um, so with that, you jump off the ship, the starboard bow. You land on one of the dead bodies of the sea feral, and then you realize that you weigh far more than this feral does, and you instantly sink into the water. But you are not drowning. You do seem to know how to swim to some degree, um, and you are making your way to John the Reddish Blue. The purple. The indigo. Oh, I was... Yeah. So I'm going to try and position myself so that if the thing comes up to eat one of us, the other one is close enough that they can attack. All right. And Ulthor, are you still reading books? Yeah. All right. Unless somebody calls to me and says, hey, we might need your help. I'm not, I'm not interested. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's a good stance that an elder would have. Okay, so Einar and John the Indigo, I want y'all to go ahead and roll dexterity. Is it Loki? It's always Loki. Just always guess Loki. And, and I see this now? Yeah, you can okay. see it. Okay. So it's I add dexterity plus what I roll? Uh huh. Four. Okay, that's good. Einar? One. Ah, not so good. One. Okay, so as you see the ripples, they begin to move at far superior speeds. You can see them moving directly towards Einar and John the Indigo uh, as they're treading water. I'm sitting here jumping up and down, rocking the ship. A new fight! A new one! A new one! The ship <laughs> rocks no. as you begin to get seasick but also a little bit claustrophobic as all the people are now <laughs> thrushing towards one side of the ship and pinning you against its railings. <laughs> Get away from me, please. Now, uh, oh, God. as John, the, the, the indigo man, rolls and dives into the water, pushing himself off the side of the ship to move faster away from this threat, Einar is not quite so lucky as the large tide runner catches him in its grip, which would be its mouth. Now, for this, I'd like you to imagine something likened to a jet black megalodon. 
This is a very <laughs> large sea predator that loves to snack on sea ferals. As it launches towards you, it launches out of the water, arcing over the boat with you in its mouth as it then dives into the water again on the other side of the boat. Everyone sees this as Einar is in its grasp and it sails over your head and then splashes down into the water on the other side with a great thunderous boom as the boat rocks back and forth even more than Thulgrim made it before. <laughs> and the crowd of Seaborn still clutter together, trying to cling to each other. They need your strength, your wisdom, your fire. They need it from you, and they grab onto you because they don't want to lose you off the side of the ship. I smile psychotically as I see the... See, what did you say it was called? It is called a Tide Runner. As I see the Tide Runner go over... Um, in between the uh, puking, I, I talk to Matarell. Why is I not playing with creature? Einar <laughs> <laughs> is indeed playing with the creature, having all the fun with him. Sorry, uh, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so <clears throat> now we will get back to Einar in a second to find out how that goes well for him. But before we get there, I think that Bloodwind, the war monger, has his chance. To make a decision. Oh, it's a new challenge. I have to go towards it. Okay. I am leaping into I the water head first with my weapons to attack it. All right. So go ahead and uh, let's see. How would we attack this? How would you now leaping into the water? That's simple enough. You don't have to roll to leap into the water. So we'll go forth from there. Um, uh, obviously, I know that y'all can all fall off the ship. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Now, how are you planning on at attacking this thing in the water? Do I... I mean, it's obviously close enough to where I am. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's there. It's large, but it seems to move at high speeds. Um, but it seems to be right there. It's attracted to the blood of the ferals. Hmm. As, as are you. My character's dumb. He's just going to um, propel off the boat towards it, kind of like a rocket, and like start twirling around. And try to do a hack and slash? A hack and slash with the axe and... The mace. The mace. Okay. So go ahead and give me a roll off your strength. And plus two is still there? Vision? You know where it is. Oh, okay. So this is just strength. Four. You back into it, you seem to have pierced its hide, and you are attached to its back now. All right, and I'm still underwater, right? Yeah. So as I oh, he hears... <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, you have managed to... You're on the other side of the ship from them. You felt the vacuum of the water as this thing launched itself out, and you've also felt the impact as it hit the other side. Uh, but you are on the other side of the boat. What would you like to do? Uh, well, all, I assume all the blood has been kind of dispersed. So I it is splashing swim, about, yeah. I swim back. I've had my fun in the blood. I swim back. Uh, I start heading back to the boat. Okay, so... Uh, I can ax my way back up the boat. Is that okay? Yeah, just go ahead and give me a roll for your strength to pull yourself up. Okay, so yeah, you definitely hack your way back up the bow of the ship, and you're back on the deck. Cool, cool. Covered in a sludge of reddish indigo sludge. Yes. And a large smile. Alright, so Saul, you see this sludge man, and also you saw Fulgrim jump into the water, you saw a great flying fish. These are all things you have had happen to you in your life in the past few moments. I was going to try to help Tolkien with my jump, but he, uh, not that, I guess. I hear you muttering to yourself over there, red boy. What are you thinking? Oh, no. See, Tony. one man 
I remember a fight from the governor's backyard. I was able to propel his own axe back at him. So I thought to myself, what if I help him by adding additional thrust to his axe on a double swing? But he dives into water and there goes the plan. It's gone now. Plans are for those who use teamwork, I would say. Yes. Unfortunately, Pilgrim does not seem like this type of man. However, first person who touches me, they are now sacrificed for my flame. I look at Jean the, uh, the, the Goo. Jean the Goo. If I look at him, uh, yeah, I hope that is not the flavor jam to put in the pocket later and force feed to this. What does it taste like? That's good for the feedback. How do you even know about that? <laughs> <laughs> Were you hiding in the bushes? Do I, do I see the uh, type runner? Uh, y'all can definitely see uh, every few seconds Fulgrim break the surface of the water is and then scream, ah And then back is it into just the water. Him or is it parts of the creature coming up? You can see parts of the creature. Okay, so. so He's like he's like attached how, to it, like he's riding the thing. How many people touched me again in this crowd that gathered around me? Oh, there's easily about five people touching me. Oh, right five now. of them are dead now. I take their flame, create massive fireball, and try to like slam dunk it. The moment I see, unfortunately, Tolkien and creature break water. And you want to hit it with the fireball? Yes. All right. So give me uh, a roll oh. off of. Let's see for that. Just your constitution. Give me your constitution. Right now. Me? Oh. We'll get to you. That is. Four. Four? Alright, so Einar and Fulgrim. Both of you give me a constitution roll. Nope. Giving you a fate. Give me a got fate. a four. Mm-hmm. I've got it. You've got a four? Yeah. Okay. I am using nigh on vulnerability. Alright, so My, I see the flames. <laughs> Not this again. So you, you yeah. change the density of your skin again. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, what everybody would see here as Fulgrim Bloodwind begins to break through the surface of the water, uh, you would basically see him, his, the, the skin color start to change to a grayish hue, uh, darkens as he becomes a little bit more in touch with his Dani bloodline. Um, and the fireball that has been created above the ship is almost like a second star that everybody is staring into right now. Uh, it's a smaller star, but it is a large star. It's pretty big compared to everybody else. Don't look too long. Uh, don't look too long, you might get blind. Uh, but he launches what? it with speed and intensity <laughs> as Thulgrim stares right at it and laughs I'm mockingly. I looked at the star, right? As Einar uses one of I will win this staring contest. Einar uses one of his daggers to slash into the Tide Runner's mouth and free himself and swim with great speed and intensity away from this instance. As the, this great giant ball of fire hits the water, causing boiling, hot, searing steam to throw up into the air as an explosion of immense proportion begins to take over the area and incinerate this poor creature of the sea. Oh, it made the mistake of attacking us. Now, as the, the sea begins to steady itself again and the storm rider begins to hold on to its, its name and survive these crashing tidal waves, it uh, begins to steady out, and as you all look around, uh, you, you can see Einar swimming closer to the ship. You can see steaming water still in the distance, when all of a sudden, through the surface of the water, you see this large man break through and say, It's in my nose! <laughs> Good God! I hope it's the water you're talking about down there, Tolkien. It is not the water. 
Oh, it's not the water. <laughs> I'm very sorry. You know, this all could have been avoided if you hadn't just, you know, stayed on your ship and you could have been Well, I'm not a pansy, so I'm not going to stay on this ship. If there's a fight, I'm going to go towards it. There's plenty of other words that I know and don't know that I could use to describe you. Oh, well, you're right. Pansy is not one of them. A pansy is a flower. He's obviously uh, not in bloom. Uh, He's only sorry, 12. <laughs> the uh, room people I've created for you, Captain, and, uh, unfortunately, power this magnitude doesn't find quite a few broken heads. This, this was an amazing circumstance to watch indeed. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Now, help your comrades back onto the ship so that I might speak to you all about what I saw and what I did not see. I'm going to try to uh, move my hand out to the Just don't break it, please. I'm kind of puny. Roll strength, roll strength. I'm kind of puny. <laughs> Two. You manage to help him onto the ship, and he does not pull you into the water. It's the buoyancy of the water. All right, so uh, everybody back on the ship, you're all gathered before your captain. Several of your crew dead, incinerated, lying on the deck of the ship. Okay, let's scoop them away. Don't just you gotta push it with your foot. All these people? Don't worry about the John Derrick. Why do they look like emaciated skeletons? Don't worry about it. There's no blood left to even have. Many they look like my friend downstairs, Uthor. Oh. Well, that's actually not a bad way to describe them. It's kind of a water beyond time. That reminds me, he missed out on all this. I must find him and tell him. Before you go, I must talk to you all about what it is to be a part of a crew. I took this opportunity to run you through your paces and find out what your worth is. And I find you wanting. Some of you are strong, and that is great. Some of you are crazy, and that's fine, and that's dandy. Some of you have much power to give, and some of you are intelligent, but none of you used your powers or your perceptions together. You did not work as a team, you did not pull together, and you did not keep your crew alive. Some this of is a failure. Crew. I'm just saying. Who killed the crew? I don't know, but here uh, they are. There is my hand to ask question. <laughs> you may ask question, Fireball. I mean, Captain, I understand what you're talking about, uh, teamwork and all, but I think that was the idea I was going for by eliminating the waters around the ship, don't you? So, you're telling me you used advantages to ensure your survival? The survival of the crew. You're pretty sure that Thulgrim was going to survive that big friggin' fireball you threw at the Tide Runner. I had faith, yes. Faith in Thulgrim? Or faith in a muck? Uh, I mean, Thulgrim's too stupid to die, so. He is pretty dumb. That is true. I had faith. I still see these things. I go, I raise my hand, I go, I can't argue. That's besides the point. Yes, I know how to argue. Did, but I choose not to. <laughs> a successful argument. Hey, is, I agree with you. I might make you my advisor since I can trust you to keep this crew alive. Uh, you're Dogram. Because I'm kind of. Dogram might eat your crowns, he might eat the. I, throw I my, eat food, not. Weird things. What's a food nut? Oh, God. What is a food? Do we have nuts on this ship? I can check the uh, pantry. Did we bring cashews? I love cashews. Maybe. Cashews are not nuts. Almonds. What are they? It's a lagoon. <laughs> What's a lagoon? I'm learning so many lagoons. Like a blue lagoon? <laughs> I don't know what color they are. Is that the type of iced tea? I, do we have tea? I'm pretty sure I love tea. Uh, did everybody throw the barrels of tea overboard? I don't know. Might have been the better idea. I don't know how this is all gone. All I know is I must return to my quarters and I must think further about how we are going to continue this voyage. 
and I must consult with my compass to ensure that we are on track, because if we even slightly deter from our course, sure death is to meet us. That's fair. Do you want me to bring you your supper? Yes, you may bring me my sup. You may sup with me when I am in my quarters. I, I have a question. You may is, use your noises of language. What is a team? A team is a unit of people who work together such as a family. Do they have to be large? Because I don't do large groups. That happens? It yes, is. it happens. That is also what Seaborn are all about. We are a crew, we are a family, we are a team. We keep each other alive. We are committed to our survival above all other things. So that we can journey, we can see, we can adventure. But who here would like to share an adventure with none? No glory to be told, no drinks to be shared, no comrades to hug. <laughs> when like you are that there. reminds me. I feel like these comments are about the uh, old people I created. Maybe no one said that was me. Just so what? You know that part? <laughs> what did you the say? broom people. Oh, I want to. That is only the beginning of the. Okay, I'm gonna send you a message. All right. Um, I want to see the life and the love of the next life. The captain takes hold of his long coat, thrusts it around as he turns. It flails in the air, and, and he makes an epic departure from the deck as he goes under the ship's deck to make his way to his captain's quarters. Dexterity? He seems kind of busy. I'm just going to go ahead and follow him. Alright. Uh, roll your dexterity. Follow him. Three. Roll your dexterity, Saul. Ooh, that is a three as well. Okay, so this is what's happening right now. <laughs> you notice that this large man has snuck behind you and he's coming at you with his arms spread wide open. But you have the ability to notice this and you start to scurry away from him as he continues to run at you, going... <laughs> HUG FIGHT! Uh, that does not uh, sound like fun. You are going to crush me with your big meteor. He's going to touch you. It's going to and hold you. Let me love you, please! Uh, the moment he tries to enclose me in his arms, I turn around and put all my dog over him. <laughs> The okay. fence mechanism. We're gonna go ahead and run Constitution and Dexterity. Oh no! <laughs> Ooh, that is a <laughs> three. Okay, so you see the lava coming at you, and you're able to sidestep it as you continue to run after him, <laughs> requesting love. <laughs> All right. Amazing. Now, everyone continues to carry on on the Storm Rider as <laughs> the weeks continue to pass. As this occurs, someone needs to take point in the crow's nest. Who is willing to do so? It can't, it can't take my weight. That's true. It can't I take know, your I'm weight. That's the smartest thing Dahlgrim's ever said. I know. Can you hear me? I know. Hello? I know. Did he fall asleep? Is He's he... talking. I cannot hear the. Uh, I think he might have muted Microphone himself. Microphone is on. I have. There you are. Why don't? Oh, now you can hear me. Yes. Okay. Don't you take I'm... I I said I will do that. Okay. All right. So uh, as Einar is in the crow's nest, go ahead and roll a perception check as the breaking. Dawn, you can see the Source Father beginning to materialize over the east. And you I, are able to see a great a distance. Four. You're able to see a great distance, and you can see something scurrying in the skies. You can see 
the large wings of birds of some sort. Hmm. It's about a mile away, but your perception, your eyes are that great, you can see these birds and almost reckon with them. Uh, you know that they must be very large. Bird ho! He yells out to everyone, bird ho! Uh, the captain rushes onto the deck, still checking his compass, tapping it fervently, saying, Ah, oh, we must be close. I knew this would happen. If we see birds, there must be land. Is he distracted now? I am actually I'm still chasing him. I like to soak up the morning light from this horse water. Yes, he is distracted. Here's my chance. Do I hear that? Roll perception, roll dexterity. Uh, four. Oh, it's a two. <laughs> you see him and you run. I don't want still. to run. I'm just going to. Togrum! Please do not touch me, that is very rude. But I have something I've been thinking about that I would like to talk to you about if you have a moment. Togrum board. I just plop down like a toddler, just boom! Crisscross applesauce. And yeah. Where did you get that axe from? Did you make it or did it? No, it was made by the weaponsmiths in Valkoria. Mm -hmm. It was from ore that came from the sky. This question is out of character, just so I know what I'm working with. But I understand that I was able to have that connection, and that is why my fire was able to control it. You understood that the uh, it reacted with you. So with it lit up in a certain way. So its emblems blazed in a certain way. They also accused some kind of red stone from a mock mountain from my home to decorate it. Secret! It's pretty awesome, isn't it? Yes, it's pretty cool. Heavy price, though. Um, I don't fully understand it myself. I do know it requires a great sacrifice. Um, hence the six dead people now. Perhaps somehow I could teach you how to tap into this. I mean, after all, Does it require books? Good, because I hate books. I hit people with books. I do not read them. Now, again, out of character. I would understand that some sacrifice was made to gain my knowledge, right? I wouldn't understand what it was, but I do know that there, I had to give something of myself. Correct. Okay. It's going to take a sacrifice. I don't even know what I had to give to give it, but it was something of mine. You may have to do this name. Hmm. That is something you are willing to give up. But a mock is, is a very, a very funny old fox. He, he takes what he thinks is most valuable to him. It could be your strength. I touch my beard. You better not. No, trust me, a mock doesn't want a beard. It took your beard, oh. didn't it? <laughs> 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 John the Red is listening in. Yeah, you just sit there, crisscross applesauce too. You just can't see him because he's behind you. I'm like little Asian boy. You can't grow facial hair. Uh, but it could be a very... It's not worth it. It could be whatever... This isn't an uh, insult to you, Tolkien, but it, it could be whatever little knowledge you have. This is a very serious thing to seek, but... I was... All of my knowledge is recent from the past few years. Before this, I was wild. I was running around in the... Literally, in the wild near Amok Mountain. That's where I was found. Oh, really? I was found in the uh, forest around the base of Amok Mountain. You but may have seen me? I don't know. Regardless... I could possibly share this secret with you, but just know it comes with a heavy price. For everything created, there must be something else. Well, there's 
something about me that's special, so we shall see. I don't know what it is. Like I just I know, know I can like, kill things. Like, uh, caress his beard, like, in anticipation that it's going to disappear. <laughs> I want to get one last touch. He does that, and I'm like, go higher. That feels good. Give me a scratch. I'm like, all right, all right. I get in here. <laughs> yes! His leg starts kicking. Yeah. I do that, and then I hug him, and I'm like, you're my new best friend! I would like to try to teach Dolgren how to call upon that thing I connected with into his... If, that, if, I if he will allow me and if yeah he'll allow and it's like he looks at you I didn't know my axe could do this I did this and I can interact with it that's the but I mean we're always learning new things and sometimes they're scary I think I'm going to have to start reading books now no books not necessary I haven't never read the book a day But, who knows? Well, that's something we have in common. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not the book smart. But the world, these things I know. I know how to fight and survive. The captain walks over to you. He rests his hand upon your shoulder. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't mean to interrupt all of this distraction from the great discovery that we have just made. Is that there is an eastern continent on this realm. However, if I should impart any of my knowledge to you, my boy, there are magics and gods aplenty in this realm, and I believe in others. All of us have one or more that we feel a connection to. I see that you are not very bright. You are heavy in the head like a brick. (laughs) So, may I give you this one piece of knowledge? Be careful whose gods you follow. For they may not burn in your heart a connection that you share with your own god. But, do as you like, because I could give a crap less. There's land, people! I mean, that is great discovery, but second great discovery. Friendship. Well, I'm glad my we're discussion on... with you got you to work like a team. We're, we're working on because we are now docking on a brand new friggin' piece of land that I've been searching for for the past 20 years. And look, you have the right crew who help you find it. I do this. We must be the world's greatest seed one to help you do this, right? I just give a simple thumbs up because I don't know the importance of this. <laughs> My choices must have been great to choose you all because you have supported me and you have helped me achieve something grand so and brand new. Does this forgive the six dead bodies? The who's? No, nothing. Oh. Yes. I'm trying to like... Uh, he's not looking at me to like fish them all the board. He's about to be on land again. You tell who? Einar's just real happy up in the crow's nest that he's about to be on land again. And as you do, um, you can see now these great um, birds in the sky. Large, large birds. Um, And you can also see the land beginning to form in the distance. You can tell uh, that it is lush and it is green. There seems to be some sort of large dock ahead of you. So that conveys to you the idea that these people may also have ships if they also have docks. Uh, yeah. Uh, watch for ships. You yell out to everyone? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> uh, I'm looking out for them, but I haven't seen any yet, but I did see a dock, so watch for ships. Captain, do you want me to uh, burn ships to center if I see them? Uh, I don't even know if we believe that they are enemies, but do be uh, watchful. I think we should all be on our toes. This is a brand new land. They could be vengeful monsters. I just start flexing. <laughs> 
Oh, you're doing the fake thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that. I'm like, you must be nothing. Strong. Nothing shall survive us if they cross us. Because we are all dilapidated. <laughs> Wait, I don't. It's not. It's best not to question these things. Just let them believe in his little fairy tale, happy go lucky. Ah, oh, it means great and courageous. Mm. A grand madman. We could all use a little madness in our life, I guess. It's chaotic indeed, but maybe it serves the purpose true. As you begin to make way to this land, um, and the storm rider begins to butt up against the docks, many of you reaching out with these large hooked poles to grab against the dock to pull the boat closer to it. People jumping down, tying ropes to the dock itself to keep the, the storm rider in place. You can see lush, thick grass everywhere. I mean, this is beautiful, green, lustrous land. I told her, I guess it's true what they say. Grass is green on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. <laughs> All right, so you you've made your way to a brand new land. No one has given you any lore, no knowledge of this. Uh, very few people would even know about this new world other than someone ancient beyond means, someone older than everyone else. Um, is there a, like a village looking place nearby or just the dock? You can see rolling hills of lush green, thick, beautiful grass. You can see uh, trees in the distance and what appears to be a large construct, a uh, pillar of sorts made of stone that seems to have a light blaring from the top of it as it towers in the sky. Uh, it seems to be a beacon or a lighthouse of some sort. I'm looking around and I'm like, huh. just seeing all the comrades around me, I'm like, wait a minute, where's Ulthor? That crazy old man. He needs to be out here. He needs to see this. Right. Why does he hide in the ship? Maybe it's because he, you tried to have this hug fight with him. I mean, he is kind of old there, Colburn. Bones break after a while. Ulfo, where are you? Uh, um, if he tries to have him, he'd run behind him, but he can't see me. Okay. Um, Ulfo, you specifically, you are not unaware of your location. Right. You have a good connection to this place and remember it well. What do you do? You take your large staff <laughs> to reach this seven foot tall head and you smack him with it, much like Rafiki and the Lion King. Was there a mosquito hit me? What what happened? Yeah, I know you got the lump up there, big man. Huh. It's like I felt nothing. I was just like, huh? Oh, oh, four! <laughs> oh, okay. I'll take that advice. He's old and senile. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right 
so uh, the captain calls out to you. That one's says, stung. This is the plan of what we are going to do. We should split up, but remain in large groups to maintain Nothing security. Now, I will take the majority of my senior seaborn over this way, towards the north. I want you, my new crew, that can be trusted on your own because you've proven yourselves time and again to venture further inland. Tell me what you find. Don't be gone for more than three days and meet back here at the ship. Never leave the ship too far behind. I look at him. You're smart. You need to keep up with time. Oh. I was never good with that. I look at Einar. You're smart. You know how to track. Please keep track of time. Einar, I'm pretty sure between the two of us we can keep track of the movement of the sun and the uh, source father and the stars. And as you say that, the captain says, ah. That is a good point. The source father is at the high point of the sky. Everyone bow before the Source Father as we say the prayers that we know well from this book as he pulls from his coat. A large, thick, leather-bound, older book. The, the leather scarred and cracking. Story time! <laughs> so I sit down neatly. He pulls the book from his jacket and he opens it up as it makes a creak of a noise. Uh, the, the pages smell of dust and age. And he says, This, the holy book held by all Orient people, the way of Valos, and we keep the way of Valos. And this, this reading hey, John, on today's date. I love the story. Always remember in times of strife the strength to persevere. Always remember that in times of strength the strife that made you who you are. Humility is the key to continued success. All hail the Source Father. All hail the Source Father. All hail the Source Dad. Yeah, Big my Papa. My, my character does not say that. Uh, note taken. Now, so you're grouped together. Ina, all four. doesn't discount the gods. He just doesn't John the Red, Soul, and Fulgrim Bloodwind. What do you do? Is you, is you, do you nominate anybody in charge? How are y'all planning on going about this? I will, I will try to keep track of the uh, son, Source uh, Father. All right. So Saul's going to be your point. He's going to be your uh, wayfinder. Sounds uh, good to me. We'll try to. I'm really thinking that it's a good idea. The captain went which way, you said? Uh, the captain went north, y'all went inland. Okay. Uh, so he did not go towards the lighthouse looking thing? No. The lighthouse is really, really close to the docks. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we need to check there first. Okay, so he says y'all should check the lighthouse. Would you agree? Uh, uh, sure. Captain, pretty sure he asked us to check in on there. I don't see a problem with checking the lighthouse. I just, maybe it's not the top of priority, priority list. So what's your priority? We need to go in there like we were asked to do. We might meet new friends. We can hug. We will find new friends here. I mean, look, I won't fight y'all. Do you know what's here? Everybody wants to go to a big, shiny building. Ulthar. Ulthar, do you know... Are, are you saying that... Ulthar, you sound like you know this place. I think you. Mr. What? What can we hope to find here? Death. Death stalks us all. A wise man did say that once. I could find death? Can I give death a hug? 
death will hug you one day. <laughs> Maybe even from the inside. They'll hug you from the inside. These are all things that both of us have bad hooks. <laughs> no, no way you wish, I will follow, but I, I tell you there's nothing here that you will, that will help you on your journey forward or except for into the other world, rather uh, death realms. Hmm. I, like he has not like ever this. lied to me, so I'm inclined to believe him. I did not understand a word he said, but I believe him. I'm so glad you're very trusting of So, so young, young man who has tr tr trouble understanding words, um, walk through jungle, die. Stay by ship, live. You're talking to you or to me? Both of you. I mean, I understand the words just fine. I'm mean, just, we would have to go this way, and what else is, what other purpose would we have here if, you know, not to go exploring? While they're talking, See, I'm throwing my axe okay. and then having it, calling let, it back. Let practicing. me explain myself again. <laughs> you go that way, you die. Fine, go that way. I go not. I go to ship and stay my ship. I don't care what Captain said. I know this place. There's nothing here but death. So that means there's something here to fight. Well, then, no, if that is the case, then death. why did you not advise against coming here? That does not make sense. Why didn't you tell Captain? Is there that? something here to fight? No, there's nothing here to fight. It is a dead land. Then how come you... Didn't but there's grass. I don't think but that's the kind of death he means. Go where, go where you will. I will not go with you. But th my question for you... Is then how come you didn't try to convince Captain? Because I didn't know where he. I did not know where he sailed when we left the dock. I, I mean, but he did not like leave so far ahead of us before. You know, he was standing right here, like not even what thirty minutes ago, maybe an hour. You you could have stopped him. You have been debating for some time. I mean, I understand. If you don't want to go. I'm not going to make you. I mean, at the very least, I think we should maybe go tell Captain, like, hey, this place is bad news, let's... let's okay. Let's if you can find them now. Okay, I mean... Einar, do you still plan on checking the lighthouse? Yeah. In fact, while they're talking, if it's not too far away, I may head that direction. I follow him. All right. I'm always seeking new challenges. I didn't want to go to the lighthouse, but like I said, I wouldn't argue, so I will also go with him. All right, so as uh, Einar leads his way towards the lighthouse, he picks up the pace. Old Uthar standing near the ship, watching these uh, young men trek off into the unknown, so sure of themselves. As they continue to walk into the distance, John the Red throwing his axe into the air and calling it back to himself, saying, oh. Look, it is my yo-yo! Go, go, my yo-yo! And he throws it over and over and over again. Uh, Let's do tricks! I know. As you come up upon the base of the lighthouse, you notice a large wooden steel bound door with chains locking it in place. All right. Do I see a mechanism that holds the chain or is, is it all one solid chain? Like, is there a lock? There is a lock, a large lock. I go to just pull the lock, roll a three. All right, so uh, you are pulling on the lock, um, and you do seem to crack one of the chain links. You might need a little bit more to make schutzpa to yeah. make it break. Mm -hmm. Chain and melt it. That would be something you could do as a... I would not suggest... You're at the ship, my friend. Unless you want to run after them. Well, I'm on the dock. I'm not in the ship. Well, I mean, but you're you're at the dock. They're probably about a hundred yards away. Then that is enough. Oh, you said three. 
Yeah, that's enough for y'all working together. His strength, your fire, you melt the chain, he pulls it free. The chains are free of the door. Ha! Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> I know the door is free for you now. Alright, I'm gonna exit the ready, open the door, and head inside. As you kick it open, you can smell the must and dust of this place, all the dark shadows and all of the scurrying creatures that have now called this place home. You look around, but no one knows what you see because this is the cliffhanger for the week. And if you want to find out more, you need to join us again next time on Saturday Night Gaming Presents Valos Through the Neva. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends and your grandmother. And as always, we love you. Get through the virus safely and keep on joining us to find out more about this crazy, wacky world that we have invented together.